Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how ATP is generated by oxidative phosphorylation. So far on this topic we've looked at glycolysis, the link reaction and the Krebs cycle. Now the whole purpose of respiration is to generate ATP. However, in the reactions we've seen so far, we've only made a net yield of four ATP molecules. Per glucose, we produced a net yield of two ATP molecules in glycolysis, plus two ATP molecules in two turns of the Krebs cycle. These ATP molecules are formed by substrate level phosphorylation. Now we've also produced 12 molecules of reduced hydrogen carriers. We've made 10 molecules of reduced NAD, plus two molecules of reduced FAD. Now when a hydrogen carrier is reduced, it gains a hydrogen plus two electrons. These two electrons contain a great deal of energy. And this energy is used to produce ATP in the next part of respiration, which is called oxidative phosphorylation. Now, in order to understand this, we need to recap the structure of mitochondria. Mitochondria have two membranes, the inner mitochondrial membrane and the outer mitochondrial membrane. And notice that the inner membrane is folded into Christi, which increases the surface area. In between these two membranes, we have the intermembrane space. OK, I'm showing you here a close-up of the mitochondrial membranes. On the inner mitochondrial membrane, we have two different sets of proteins. These are called the electron transport chain and ATP synthase. The first stage of oxidative phosphorylation involves the electron transport chain. Reduced NAD transfers its two high energy electrons to the first protein in the electron transport chain. And I'm showing the electrons as E minus. This means that the first protein in the electron transport chain is reduced. The two electrons now pass to the second protein. So in this case, the first protein is now oxidized and the second protein is reduced. Now a key idea you need to understand is that as the electrons move down the electron transport chain, the electrons lose energy. This energy is used by the electron transport chain proteins to pump protons, in other words hydrogen ions, from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Because the inner membrane is impermeable to protons, the protons build up in the intermembrane space. The electrons continue making their way down the electron transport chain in a series of oxidation and reduction reactions. And at each stage, protons are pumped into the intermembrane space. At the end, the two electrons have transferred all of their energy. So these two electrons now combine with oxygen and two hydrogen ions to make a molecule of water. And you need to learn this equation. Oxygen is described as the final or terminal electron acceptor, and this is the only time that oxygen is used in the whole of aerobic respiration. Now, reduced FAD operates in the same way as reduced NAD. However, the electrons from reduced FAD enter the electron transport chain in the middle rather than the start. Now, as we said before, a molecule of glucose generates 10 reduced NAD molecules and two reduced FAD molecules. So as a result of the electron transport chain, the concentration of protons is much greater in the intermembrane space than in the matrix. This proton gradient is now used to generate ATP. The enzyme ATP synthase is found on the inner mitochondrial membrane, and ATP synthase contains an ion channel through the center. Protons now diffuse down the gradient through the ion channel into the matrix. This movement of protons is used by ATP synthase to generate ATP from ADP and PI. And scientists call this process chemiosmosis. Now in theory, oxidative phosphorylation can provide 34 molecules of ATP per glucose molecule. However, this depends on the conditions and is usually less than this. Substrate level phosphorylation in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle provides only four ATP molecules per glucose. So as you can see, oxidative phosphorylation provides the vast majority of ATP in aerobic respiration. In the next video, we look at anaerobic respiration. 